Hello, welcome to this video. Uh, just explain what it is. Uh, tap. Hot doesn't work, and the cold works. Now the reason for that is I've turned the hot off because it leaks like a sieve. Um, so what we're going to do is change this tap for a new one. It's only been two years since I turned that off, so I don't want to rush these things. Before I do that, just sneak in here, have a look. What are you doing? Huh? You behaving yourself? You're a good girl. Yeah. The reason I'm doing it today is it's, it's nine degrees outside. Nine degrees. feels like minus 20 it's so cold so I've got the heater on anyway so let's get this drawer open as this is an IKEA drawer just lift it up and we're out when I fitted the kitchen I made sure that we've got two uh, isolating valves they might not look like this under your sink. They might be the type which is um, like a screwdriver turn off, something like that. But it all works along the same principle. So here we go. It's a Belfast sink. Normally you would put these taps higher up, but we wouldn't have got access to them. Um, so I've put them lower down, but because of that, I've had to put this extension in like that. See that that's the hot and that's the cold. The colours. So I'll turn this off. Superb. Now, sometimes, uh, in fact, yes, good. Almost like a time now, isn't it? It's leaking. Just round the spindle there, look. So if your tap's been on for years and years and then you suddenly decide to turn it off one day well that's exactly what can happen but there is some good news if you swap the tap and turn it back on into the old position that it was so fully open normally um, there's a possibility that it will stop leaking because it's used to being in that position so don't worry too much about that yet likewise with the isolating valves with this um, screw head in it's the same sort of thing we will uh, see if it when we open this up again that it stops leaking and of course the pipes have all got water in and as soon as you crack the nut and let the air in, the water will come out. Oh, it's my dinner. I'll be right back. Oh. Oh. What? No, we can't play. We can play later. You're going to need a bowl. Because there will be some water. Any bowl will do. Uh, it won't be a lot, but just enough. Um, or you can just put a towel down, something like that. So once you get it, so you can do it with your fingers. You get to this stage where you can do it with your fingers, have your bowl ready. That's it. Just undo. And then point it straight into the bowl when you think it's undone. <laughs> you want a drink? You've got your own water. Oh dear. Okay, so that's the cold disconnected. But, and here's the big but. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to go up to the tap now and I'm going to turn on the cold. And you'll see that there is still water left inside the tap but by turning the cold tap on the water will come out 
so you can catch it in this bowl. Uh, normally, uh, I'd probably be down here uh, if I couldn't reach the tap I get someone to do it and hold the bowl right underneath but for dramatic purposes I shall go and do that and you can watch there you go so there's quite a bit see why I'd normally use uh, two people thank you Rosie yeah very good And then we'll do the same again with the hot tap. Obviously, put a ball actually underneath it next time. Okay, this might be better. All right, so there we have it. It is a single tube um, with a nut around the edge. There are other, there are other types. Um, a bolt coming down with a uh, what do we call it? Nut on it. Uh, but this one is pretty straightforward. But as you can see, access is very difficult. Okay, so we're all dry now, um, or well, reasonably for now. So we need to get up the back there. So I'll show you what kind of tools we've got for that. Okay, so these are some of the tools we can use to remove the tap. Uh, normal adjustable spanner, some pipe grips, water pump pliers, whatever you want to call them, and this is a tap wrench, which uh, is quite useful. So that might come in handy if you wanted to use that, or we can go for a set which has an extension and the uh, sizes for various. Uh, taps. It's designed for bath taps but should work on kitchen taps. You given up? Gone back to the heater. It's not that cold in here, look. You're a big softy, aren't you? Okay, so this is the idea. So if we look at this, it looks like it will not expand enough to get round get around that nut because it's recessed into the worktop. So we've got to find another method. Of course that way. So, the fancy pants kit is too small as well. Right, so we know that the nuts underneath, so we do this. Simple as that. Yes, you could do that beforehand, but it depends on your surface that you've got. Um, if this is on a Corian granite, or some surface like that, then I wouldn't advise it. But now, because it's solid wood, I don't really care what happens to it because I'm going to change it. We'll just do that, and that's slacken the nut off underneath. So we can now go underneath, hand tight, and unscrew it.
There we go, new tap. So firstly, we'll slip that over the end of there, and then over the ends of the hot and the cold. Uh, simply take that label off. That is pretty simple, really. Um, the that all goes underneath. This spacer is usually, if it's a stainless steel sink, to spread the weight. Uh, we'll see if we've got enough distance there to do that. May have, may not have. Um, and then normally this goes. Like that. I'll let me assemble it exactly how it's going to go underneath so we can see straight away. You got a rubber washer and a plastic uh, space. Well, it's a spacer, but it's to spread the weight across the worktop. Metal uh, washer, and then this screws on to tighten it up. Once you've reached it tight, uh, you've got it tight. You then screw this so that's tied up to there. Screw these two screws in, which locks that in place so that the tap doesn't spin. Quite clever. So, sorry. Right, a tip for you. Once we've um, threaded all those washers and fixing parts uh, over the pipes, you then re-thread the black one up because that's got to connect into the output here. With a rubber washer and it's much easier to do it like this than try and do it underneath believe me i've tried so. don't over tighten it because it's a rubber washer but just uh nip it up till you see it, you feel it bite Tighten it up. Our two connections, one is marked hot, the other one's obviously cold. So we just need to connect um, these together, but so we need the brass bits out of the old tap to go in there. Screw in. Okay, so let's turn it on and see what happens. Ah, 
now we've got a leak. So where's it leaking from? From the top. But like I said before, once you've opened it, the leak stops. Okay. Cold. Hot. So this is an extender thingy. And it's supposed to retract. But it doesn't. That's why they give you this weight to clamp around the black pipe underneath to make sure that this falls. But I bet you it doesn't work on this. Let's clamp it on and see what happens. Might get lucky. Yeah, I know. It's got to happen sometime. Right. As I thought, it hits that piece of wood. Yes. I think that'll do though. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that was the emotional roller coaster, high octane video on changing this tap. Um, quite a nice little tap, didn't cost too much money. Um, Works as a normal tap, and that. but also which is dead useful uh, for rinsing things out, especially the coffee machine, things like that. So yeah, I'm pleased with it. It was much needed because the other one was broken years ago. Uh, yeah, that's it. So thanks for sticking with me on this video. Uh, might not be the most exciting one I've done, but it's sure going to help somebody somewhere. Um, so I'm off to prepare for World War Three now, by the looks of things. So I'll see you on the next one.